Well, hello everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your lunch hour here with us today. My name is Carissa Griedebeck. I'm the manager of corporate volunteerism. And on behalf of United Way, welcome to our first lunch, learn, and do of 2022. Do you like what I did there? I like when things rhyme. Um, so if you are back and have joined us for one of these sessions in the past, welcome. For those that aren't as familiar, this Lunch, Learn, and Do series um, is kind of a reinvention or a twist on the traditional Lunch and Learn. So we take over the course of an hour an opportunity to educate and share with you about a critical issue that is facing members of our community. More so than just that 30,000 foot level look, we really like to take a deep, a deep dive into some of the more specifics um, and some of the interconnectedness of these issues in our community. We invite you to ask questions, to connect with other like-minded community members, engage in some great conversation and become advocates. And then comes the do. So you've learned, you've connected. Now what can you do to help us continue to fight against this particular issue? So today's Lunch, Learn and Do, we are talking about all things diaper bank, little ones, basic needs, and really how these very, very basic supplies contribute to the overall health of our community. And we'll certainly weave in ways that you can help us today and into the future. I'm a parent, and I'm guessing many of you on this call may be parents or caregivers yourselves. And you know, when it comes to diapers and wipes and some of these very basic supplies, many of us are fortunate that if we need them, we buy them. We throw them in our cart at Target, we may have them shipped by Amazon right to our door. And there is never a question on if we're going to be able to change our child. It's just when, when it fits in. Um, and to know that there are so many community members that instead have to focus on, can I? Will I be able to? When will I be able to get what I need to be able to change my child? is such a heartbreaking issue. And so that's something we're going to talk about today. There's so many people and organizations in our community that are doing incredible work to make sure that families have access to these basic supplies. So first, before we go ahead and get started, certainly want to let you know that this is a camera friendly event. If you would like to turn your camera on and join us, we would love to see your face. We do ask that you stay muted unless you have a question, just so everybody can hear and join in on the presentation. And this is meant to be super interactive. So please ask questions, share comments, share aha moments in the chat. Um, we'd love to be learning right along with you. I want to take a moment to thank Landmark Credit Union who is the very generous sponsor of this Lunch, Learn, and Do series. We have a number of these that'll be happening throughout the course of the year. So if you like what you hear today and you like this experience, we'd love to have you join us again. I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague and my friend, Melissa DiCicco with Landmark Credit Union to just briefly welcome you before we get into the presentation today. Uh, thank you, Carissa, um, and I'd like to just welcome you all to the session today. I'm Melissa DiCicco, the Director of Community Relations and Events for Landmark Credit Union. Landmark has been a longtime supporter of United Way. We run an annual workplace giving campaign. We implement year-round engagement uh, activities for our employees and continually look for ways to help support the communities that we're, we serve. So we're very excited to sponsor United Way's Lunch, Learn, and Do series for 2022. We appreciate this partnership and that we can support United Way in bringing people together to have these discussions about pressing community challenges and how we can connect to tackle those challenges together. Today's session, like Carissa says, it speaks to me as well as a mother, but it also speaks to me as a credit union employee. As any mom knows, um, a new baby can change your, your life in many wonderful ways, but it can also change your finances quite a bit, which you're going to learn more about how all these little baby items can really add up um, and cost a lot for people. So this is what we at Landmark call one of those landmark moments where your life and your finances collide. And unfortunately, many in our community may not be able to afford or have access to those resources that they need. And that's why we're grateful to United Way and their community partners 
for helping to connect local families to these critical resources and helping to create equal access for people to meet those basic needs. So thank you again for allowing Landmark Credit Union the opportunity to support the Lunch, Learn, and Do series. And now I'd like to turn it over to Nicole Ingersano, Vice President of Community Impact for United Way. Thanks so much, Melissa. Just echoing my gratitude to Landmark Credit Union for affording us these wonderful opportunities. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I know there are myriad demands on your time, um, especially over the lunch hour where you could be doing other things. And it means so much to us that you use this time to learn more about our work and, and today to learn about, um, as you've heard, an issue close to many of our hearts, those of us that are that are parents on the call. But I think in general, as we as we consider, um, you know, what it means to be living financially at the margins and what what life really costs. You know, I've never gone to a store and worried about being able to purchase diapers. I've never had to make a decision between purchasing diapers and purchasing milk or something else. And these are the very real challenges facing many in our community. Um, I think all of us would agree diapers are an essential and a necessity and not a luxury item. So United Way wants to do whatever we can do to relieve folks of that burden, to make sure that every family, regardless of ability to pay, um, has this critical, critical need met uh, in their homes. And I'm gonna talk to you about why we do that and how we do that a little bit today. We can go on to the next slide. So our diaper bank, um, I think most people know, uh, you know, sort of it, it intuitively what it means to have a diaper bank. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about the why, right? So we could do a lot of different um, and do do a lot of different kit packing opportunities, collection, distribution. During COVID in particular, United Way really ramped up our capacity around um, making sure that we were able to distribute critical uh, equipment and supplies to the community. And this opportunity has really been something that we've been thinking about and considering for the last few years. And we're so grateful um, for the National Diaper Bank Network's support as we really take this from idea um, and some small diaper opportunities that we've been doing for years and years to a full-fledged uh, opportunity to meet the needs of the one in three families in our community that struggle uh, with, with capacity to afford diapers, um, to make sure that we have the ability to uh, meet the needs of parents and children from newborns all the way up through ages three and four. And we mobilize this by connecting uh, donors uh, and their dollar and their donations with um, facilities and agencies in our community that are out there doing direct service. Now, Carissa, I've got so many things up on my screen. Do we go back and answer uh, the initial question about, about the diapers? No, we didn't. So I'm sure everybody's waiting on, on pins and needles if you want to share what the number is. Yes. Well, I'm very, I'm actually very, very impressed. Uh, wait, did I see it? I'm very, very impressed uh, to, with, with the guesses, one of which was almost spot on. 6,500 diapers on average between birth to three. And that's assuming um, diaper training is completed at three. And I'm not gonna, you know, tell my 15 year old's business, but for us, it took a little bit longer than that. So this is, a, this again is an underestimate, if anything, of what it costs for families. And that's again, one kid, right? Families have two kids, three kids, four kids. So as you can see, if you start doing the math in your head, this can get out of hand very quickly. Um, so we know it's a need, we know it's a critical gap that we need to fill and that's why we're going to fill it. Next slide then. So we're going to do a little bit of a reality check. You had the first uh, intro question in the chat box about how many diapers per child per year. Let's test your uh, let's test your knowledge. I think this is particularly challenging for those of us who uh, haven't had uh, diaper wearers in the home for quite some time or maybe not yet uh, at all. But let's see how you do. Let's go to the first question. You all can drop your answers into the chat. Next slide. Okay, a pamper size three, 136 count box. What do you think the cost of this is? And that's assuming we'll, we'll do average across Target, Amazon, Walmart. It doesn't, it doesn't stretch that much. It doesn't uh, vary that much. Drop in one, two, or three into the chat box.
The answer to this is three, $42.99 for 136 diapers. Yes, there are other brands. Yes, we've got folks who are really good at coupon uh, cutting, but this is the average cost of this box uh, in the market. And that's, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money for people. Let's go to the next one. What about baby wipes? These often go with the diapers, an important, an important accessory to have. 99 cents for a pack, $1.50 for a pack, or $1.99 for a pack. Again, one, two, or three. You guys are pretty good at this. I see a lot of correct answers already. $1.99 for a pack of baby wipes. Let's go to the third one. Huggies pull-ups, so even when we're transitioning from diapers, but we're still not fully potty trained yet, um, some of our older kids, three, even four, and sometimes even older, are still wearing pull-ups. How much for a 78 count of pull-ups, A, B, or C? You guys seem to be on to me. $28.99. For, for pull-ups. And this doesn't take into account um, how many of you had uh, had babies who were swimmers and you need special swim diapers, you need other diapers, you need to have them at daycare, um, you know, in order to, to make sure that they have what's needed there. Um, I, uh, I, I toyed with, I, I'm, I'm a bad environmentalist, I'll admit it, because I toyed with uh, cloth diapers for about three days before I decided that was just not going to work for, for me and my family. So there are some other options, but for most of us, the vast majority of, of American families use disposable diapers. Next. Formula. I share this without judgment. We believe at United Way that fed is best that different families have different capacities around whether or not they bottle or breastfeed. Many of our families are bottle feeding, some do both. How much for one can of Similac formula? A, B, or C? C, $36.99. Again, a high, high cost for keeping your children um, with just their basic needs being met in terms of diapers and formula. Let's keep going. An eight ounce bottle with, an, this is very specific, Carissa, with a medium flow nipple. <laughs> I don't know anymore if the flows have different prices, but this is a very specific, let's just say one bottle with a nipple, one count, um, very important to have both breastfeeding and bottle feeding um, are often uh, often utilize uh, these products. How much for one bottle? It's C again, five dollars and seventy four cents. The costs keep adding up, and again, we're just doing the basics here. Next slide. Tearless baby shampoo and baby wash. This is starting to feel like a baby shower game. I like it. Also, I'm getting most of the answers wrong. So you can tell that the, uh, this, the costs have changed a lot in my 15 years. How much does this Aveeno Tearless Baby Shower and Body Wash cost? $675, 7 or $721. The answer is C again. Again, this, 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 uh, this cart's getting pretty expensive. Next slide. So I hope what that showed you is, first of all, um, having children is, uh, is a blessing for those of us who opt into that opportunity, um, but it's not cheap. And what we showed you today are just a few basic items uh, that, don't, that don't begin to cover uh, the actual cost. And we know that for families, again, who are living at or below poverty, um, although some of these costs might be covered um, with, some, with certain programs or benefits, many of them are not. And so whatever United Way can do to bridge that gap, we want to do. Here's our 2021 recap on our diaper bank and really our first full year of operation. Uh, 203,000 diapers received from donors, 50,000 wipes nearly received. We supported over 2,300 families, um, which impacted over 2,500 children. 
I suspect those are lower estimates because we try to be really thoughtful and cautious about how we do that. But that's a lot of families getting just this really basic sort of low hanging fruit level of support, which is let's just make sure they have diapers. Let's make sure they don't have to make choices between paying for a bill or grocery shopping and getting the bare necessities that their babies need. So when we think about um, how, we dis how we distribute, we have a lot of different models to look at across the country. But for United Way, we don't do much without the work of our agency partners. We know um, that as connected as we are to the community, what we have here on this slide are nine additional partners that we know are just out there day to day, boots on the ground, and have connections to families. So we really use a hub model where we make sure that the nine folks that, uh, pictured here, as well as all, all the time we're thinking about adding new, making sure that we're covering some geographical gaps, making sure that we're looking at um, need on all sides of town and across our four county footprint, of course, that these partners um, in turn become their own diaper banks. And so that the families that use them, the families that live in the communities proximal to them, you'll see schools on here. These reflect community schools where United Way has additional staff supports to make sure that the families who attend that school have what they need as well. Um, and so here are our inaugural diaper hubs. And I'm so excited today because we have with us representing three of these hubs representatives. And we're going to talk to you about what this project has meant to them, uh, what this project means in particular to the clients that they serve. So let's go to the next slide. So please join me in welcoming uh, two on camera, one with voice only, but she's here, uh, Karen, Crystal, and Tequila, representing Waukesha Food Pantry, 16th Street Community Health Centers, and Milwaukee Health Services, three of our wonderful inaugural diaper hubs. Ladies, thank you so much for being here today. I have a few questions um, set aside for each of you. And so when I get you, uh, when I, when I, uh, sort of uh, pitch to you. Also share briefly with this audience um, what your agency does for those that might not be familiar. So I'm going to start with um, Tequila. Tequila, how are you? I am doing well. How are you today? Wonderful. Thank you so much for being with us. Tequila, tell the audience a little bit about Milwaukee Health Services um, and what it is you do. And then I'm going to go more specifically into your relationship to our diaper need. Absolutely. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Tequila Barnett. I am a outreach and enrollment specialist here at Milwaukee Health Services. I so uh, enjoy what I do as far as helping the community. Um, I just believe that everyone deserves quality health care. Uh, one of the uh, missions here at Milwaukee Health Service is that our, our primary a uh, goal or mission here is to provide health care uh, services to our Milwaukee residents, uh, emphasis on those that are medically un, um, underserved families and individuals. Some of the comprehensive services uh, that we offer here is pediatric, women's health, adult medicine. Um, also, the, the goal is to uh, remove barriers uh, in improving health care outcomes to promote quality health care and uh, reduce health disparities to our community. Wonderful. Well, we love what you're, we, you're, we love that you're both a neighbor uh, and we love the work that you do. So we're so happy that you're here today. Tequila, Thanks. tell us a little bit about how your clients and consumers um, are served uh, with, with diapers from your agency and how you depend on local donations to make that happen. Yes. So we depend 100% um, organizations like United Way, as when it comes to um, diapers, it is a great and awesome opportunity to our families, to our moms, uh, to our grandmas, um, where there's non-traditional families who come in and so desperately look forward to uh, just having these diapers being um, uh, donated to them. Um, I can kind of give you an instance where it was a grandma who actually um, took care of like three grandchildren in her family. And I am so happy to say that I, I walked away, she walked away with diapers uh, during that time. I think it was an outfit that was given, books that was given to the family. So 
it's it what United Way do, do here is 100% greatly appreciated uh, by our, our organization and for sure by the community here. I love that. Crystal, how are you? Crystal's joining us from longtime United Way partner 16th Street. Tell us a little bit about what you do at 16th Street. Good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Crystal Edwards. I am a, a registered nurse here at the 16th Street Clinic. I'm actually a nurse case manager for our perinatal care coordination program. Um, and so we provide extra resources uh, th throughout the pregnancy for our pregnant women. Um, the 16th Street Clinic has been serving the Milwaukee South Side for over 50 years. Our mission is to improve the health and well-being of the Milwaukee communities and pro by providing quality patient-centered family-based health care. Um, we have a mission of um, promoting health education. We have social services that are free from linguistic, cultural, and economic barriers. The 16th Street Clinic has four medical clinics and 20 um, in-school clinics. Um, and as uh, in 2021, we opened up our first uh, dedicated behavioral health clinic. Uh, we offer bilingual services. We have over eight midwives that help to deliver over 600 babies per year. So with that being said, um, we as a perinatal care coordination program, we just provide those resources that are needed um, for those families in order to promote healthy birth outcomes. And after the babies are born, in order for the parents to feel secure in um, how they're able to treat their, their babies and how they're able to successfully raise their babies. I love that. Crystal, your agency has been as involved as any in terms of addressing COVID-related um, both health needs and other. I'd love for you to share with the group um, how you've seen COVID impacting families and their capacity to access their basic needs during this, during this last um, two years. So with the shutdown, our, our agency depends greatly on donations. Um, and with the shutdown, um, it shut down a lot of factories that were donating items to our families, um, especially Pampers to our families. And so um, when those donations stopped coming, we had to um, try to figure out different resources for our patients because um, patients were still having babies and jobs were being lost due to COVID. Um, if a patient was diagnosed with COVID, she couldn't go back to work, her family couldn't go back to work. So, um, you know, there was, you know, times where patients were not working for months because of um, being exposed to COVID. So um, it, it did, it greatly reduced the amount of donations that we were able to provide for our families. However, with um, United Way, I, I feel like United Way was such a great blessing and it came at such a, a wonderful time um, because we were now able to serve at least 30 to 40 patients per month with the diapers that are being donated from United Way. And so that is such a huge help and our patients are so appreciative and so grateful of everything, every little thing that we can do for them. We think it's a small gesture, but for them it is huge, it's a huge help. So we really do appreciate what United Way has done for us. Yeah, there's, um, I've been uh, I've been here for 15 years um, uh, last month and, I'm continually amazed by uh, the gratitude that our agency partners uh, show us and extend to us. Because when I say this, I say it with sincerity. Um, the, we feel so lucky to have you all. You know, we have this capacity to get these diapers in, and we have you know storage, and we have staffing, and we can sort of use our strength to do the logistics. Um, but having agency partners like 16th Street and the others both on this call and not um, who have such trust and credibility in the community that's what makes this work so so while we we thank you for your thank you um, we are so uh, we feel so blessed and lucky to have uh, the three of you and the other six hubs in this space um, making sure that we connect the dots um, there's a big difference between United Way connecting diapers and then sort of one-offing it here and there than really what's become a systematic um, distribution model. So, so grateful to you for that, Crystal. Thank you so much. Hi, Karen. 
Karen is joining us from uh, the Waukesha Food Pantry. And I think just as a reminder to folks on this call, because sometimes I think we forget United Way's footprint actually includes Waukesha, Washington, and Ozaki counties as well. I think one of the interesting things about our friends in the outer counties is that need isn't always recognized out there. Um, it might not always be as obvious uh, to some folks. But Karen, I think you see a lot of need um, at the food pantry in general, but talk about how that need extends to diapers um, and what challenges your organization faces to make sure people get those needs met, not just, not just uh, shelf-stable food, but also the other that you provide. Absolutely. Um, so as Nicole had stated, I'm Karen Treadwell, and I'm the executive director of the food pantry serving Waukesha County. And I've been here for 25 years. So I've seen a lot of changes in the community at large, as well as what is necessary to keep our families healthy and whole. And um, that indeed does include diapers. We're serving approximately 5,000 people a month through our food pantry services. And about 36% of those people are children, many of whom require diapers. Um, as a food pantry, of course, our primary mission is to provide food, but we also recognize that other groceries are necessary, including diapers, wipes, um, baby toiletries, things of that nature. And in so many cases, it is literally a key to employment. Um, as you may know, if somebody is eligible for food share, uh, formerly known as food stamps, you cannot use those for diapers, for wipes, for baby shampoo, soaps, anything of that nature. Of course, they're critical. And when somebody is um, having their child in a certified child care situation, they are almost always required by the licensing um, entities to bring the disposable diapers, wipes, and so forth. And the child care center typically has the right to deny entry if the family cannot bring those items with them. So from an individual basis, of course, access to, to those items is critical. From a, an agency standpoint, um, being a food pantry, when we've recruited or solicited donations of diapers and toiletries and other things, um, sometimes our food donations diminish. And so there's a balancing act from an agency perspective as to how we get that information out to our donors without compromising what we can offer as food. So um, again, there's this balancing act. Um, another challenge we have is that when families are utilizing the WIC program, the Women, Infant, and Children program, the types of formulas that they have available are very specific to what they contract with. So when our families come in who also receive formula from WIC, they want that same type of formula, which as, as a parent and grandparent myself, I understand why. There are some equivalencies with um, the various formulas, which we certainly provide that information to our families. But again, um, being a parent is a pretty tough job and you don't want to tip that, that delicate balance when the child is thriving on a specific formula. And if we don't have it, then there's a possibility that that um, family and child may go without. And again, with WIC, they are providing a certain amount um, for each family, and it usually isn't quite the amount that the family needs. Another challenge that is really um, new to me, I've been here for 25 years. I believe this is the first time that we had a um, recall on formula and we literally had to throw away formula that was well within date, the types of formulas that our families want and need. And we were put in the position of, of literally throwing it away. Um, United Way hasn't only helped us with the diaper bank, but they heard about our challenges and um, funded formula for us, which as you can imagine is 
like gold. As you saw from the prices, it sometimes I think it costs as much as gold. And, um, you know, to have to use food share for a big chunk of that formula for an infant and possibly go without for the rest of the family is really um, heartbreaking. And so to have partners like United Way and our community donors to make sure that we can continue to meet the need is just in, is simply incredible. Um, and, I, and I think, again, when you're looking at families in need, we don't always know the whole story, but when you do, um, so much of what we need and ask for makes so much sense. Um, you know, looking at those prices, uh, I think even though I, I do this every day is still a wake up call when you compile all those prices together, it's almost insurmountable uh, um, for many families. So um, what you all do to make sure that we can continue to serve is nothing short of a miracle. So thank you all for, for what you do. Thank you, Karen. Um, you know, again, I'm just uh, um, uh, humbled and overwhelmed by the work that all three of these organizations do. And I think, um, Karen, you wrote up a few things that sort of I wanted to uh, repeat and lift here too, which is, so what you've heard today already is, you know, through either grants, you know, or mobilizing uh, financial resources, that's sort of the give part of United Way, right? And in a few minutes, we're gonna talk about the volunteer part. But something Karen brought up um, reminded me that we haven't talked a lot yet about the advocacy part. And I think, um, Kristen, in the, in the chat, what you were reacting to were the comments of how many of these products are not covered by food share, right? So from a policy standpoint, when United Way thinks about our potential impact in policy and advocacy. What you're hearing today are some real, um, um, some real sort of nuggets of things that we talk about. If you're going to provide adequate um, food shares for folks, if you're going to say that people that work at a or that live at a certain income level have the right to um, uh, dignity and to access those basic needs. And then you're saying those basic needs don't count diapers. They also don't count in this state um, menstrual products, which is something we're gonna talk about a little bit later as well. Um, then that's a policy failure. And that's where United Way needs to mobilize our policy and advocacy arm, not just our give and our volunteer arms as well. So Karen, I'm so glad that you, that you flagged that for me as well. I had forgotten to mention that. I want to take a breath here. I have other questions, but I also want to make sure that we afford um, audience members to ask particularly questions of, of the experts here, which is our three panelists. So let me just take a break. If you want to either jump in or uh, raise your little hand under reactions, I want to make sure that we get to you before I continue. And also feel free to share your own comments or experiences. We want this to be interactive and personal um, to you. So let me just take a breath there. Carissa, you tell me if anybody's got their hands up. You know, I can't multitask. I'll get, I'll get distracted. I already get distracted by the chat. And we can come back around as well. Let me go back to our um, panelists and, and sort of run through uh, with the three of them anything that we didn't get to that you, you all had some really interesting things that you shared about your work when we did our run through last week. And I want to make sure you have this great opportunity to share with folks on this call um, anything we might not have covered yet, particularly as it's related to maternal and child health. So uh, Tequila, why don't I start with you? Um, anything else about Milwaukee Health Services that you wanna make sure this uh, really great audience hears about today, particularly as it relates to uh, caring for um, our, our moms and babies and dads? Um. I've just heard such great things um, on today, and, and I am actually so glad that I'm a part of this, um, just to hear the feedback on uh, moms and families being impacted. You know, I've been uh, out the game as far as when it comes to, because um, uh, my children are grand or older uh, adults, 
you know, it's been years since I've had to buy diapers and formulas and, you know, just different things. And this is so crucial. This is so needed with uh, everything that's just going on with um, COVID and, and different things and people just kind of making the, the, the difference on, you know, um, food compared to diapers and kind of making those decisions on where that's going to be when it comes to uh, providing for my family. So uh, just United Way and what you guys are doing is so awesome, so needed for our communities. Um, I think families that may have never been impacted in this way uh, is being impacted now. And so this is, this is something that is huge that I, I, I hope that we, uh, United Way continue to do uh, for the community. I know here at Milwaukee Health Services, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, when it started, it's I'm just blown about the number of families that we've helped since this has started. So uh, just kudos. Thank you, United Way. Greatly appreciate it. And, and I just look forward to continual um, uh, collaborations and just being um, connected um, so that we can just continue to help our families in a way that uh, we've never uh, haven't done before. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the work you and your team do. Um, if we had if we had more time, we could talk about you know two two of the folks on this call represent uh, federally qualified health centers, and I can't think of a of sort of a segment of our healthcare group that has done more heavy lifting these past two years um, than what's gone on at Milwaukee Health Services and and 16th Street, who in addition to um, you know, responding to COVID related needs, still had to do their day jobs. Right, they're still taking care of of pregnant moms, they're taking care of folks with chronic illness and just an extraordinary lift um, at a difficult time, particularly uh, a difficult time for providers who uh, both risked exposure and, and, and had some other challenges. So, so deeply grateful to the two FQHCs on this call for, for reasons that go well beyond um, the diaper bank. Crystal, I'd like to I'd like to talk to you maybe, and maybe this is an opportunity to share a little bit about, you know, uh, sort of the process about how might uh, a, a, an expectant family get connected with 16th Street, and then what would happen, um, sort of, when they come through your doors and they're and they're gonna and they're getting ready to have a baby? What are some of the things that clients can expect to get from 16th Street in that space besides going home with diapers? <laughs> No, so our clinic is known for its warmness, for its friendliness, for its acceptance. Um, we have a huge immigrant population, and in order for us to function well, we have to make everyone feel welcome. And that's um, one of the things, the, the biggest thing that you can expect when you come into the 16th Street Clinic. Um, it is my job, as well as another, um, we have another case manager, nurse case manager at the other clinic, but it's our job to greet every pregnant woman that comes through our doors. And um, what that is, is educating them on how to apply for state insurance. You know, this is foreign to a lot of people. So one of our roles is to help them apply for state insurance. That way um, they get the benefits of not having a huge bill after they deliver a baby. Um, we provide them resources like WIC. Um, we provide uh, resources like behavioral health as needed. Um, so it's just my job to be that link to the resources that the patients may need um, and don't necessarily know how to access those resources. Um, we have lactation services. So um, after the babies are delivered, we offer those lactation services, whether it's at a home visit or here within the clinic with the patient. Um, so I just, I just tell people we are that link to external resources that patients may need. Um, I love that. WIC is Women, Infant, and Children. So WIC is just um, an extra resource for um, uh, food that patients may need. So with the WIC services, they provide formula, they provide bread, cereal, vegetables, fruits, um, patients may need. And it, it also, it supplies the whole family, not just for the mother, it's for the mother and the family. 
Thank you. Thanks for asking that question. And, and we tend to operate a lot in sort of um, acronyms and inside speak. So sometimes we say things and then we forget that we haven't explained them and, and Crystal explained it beautifully. Um, Karen, I want to come back to you one last time because I think you've really elevated this sort of connection between um, uh, the, the policy piece of things. And so while we talked a little bit about, um, first of all, I, I do want, not everybody looks at the, the chat function all the time. Uh, Carissa dropped in our, our advocacy tool bit, our toolkit around diaper banks, which has myriad information about how you can get involved. But Karen, since we have you and your expertise is really on the food side of things, what are some additional policy or advocacy opportunities um, that you'd like to see more community members get involved in and, and raise their hands and say, look, this isn't working. We need this to be done differently or we need to include this, et cetera. Um, oh, thank you for asking. Um, so actually there are a lot of things people can do as individuals. Um, letter writing is fantastic. Like if you see something that is coming up for a vote on the state or federal level, um, there are a lot of different tools about how to write to your legislator, how to find your legislator and so forth. But specifically for people in need, um, and, and I, I can certainly get the information to, um, to United Way to make sure that if people are interested, they can take a peek. But there are some federal um, legislative bills coming up related to um, electronic benefits transfer that the food share uh, type um, benefits. Um, one thing we did this, this last year um, as, a, as an agency, um, you may or may not know that because of COVID, they were, um, th there was a movement to keep the summer meal program in place for the school year last year and this school year, which means that everyone, regardless of income, gets free school meals. Um, the school district in Waukesha had, was the only school district in the state who decided not to offer the free meals. And uh, we advocated heavily to reverse that decision. We, we talked to parents, we talked to the school board, we talked to school administrators, we met with key people and um, they went back to the school board and reversed the decision. So in that case, after the decision was already made to have it reversed was, was actually a huge success. And in this you know, situation, um, the, the school district was saying, well, anybody who can get free meals or who needs free meals can get them. Well, that's not always the case. There are some barriers to filling out the free and reduced meal application forms. And um, there, there are just a variety of reasons why it wasn't as the free and reduced meal program isn't as successful as it might be. So the universal meal program was a huge benefit to people who are recovering from some of the deficits that COVID has brought to their families. Um, and in addition, it was, it's a COVID mitigation strategy because when everybody is receiving universally free meals, there's not as much one-on-one um, -on -one contact like paying the um, lunch person uh, standing closer in line, it's a little bit more seamless of a project. So I was really, really impressed with how a local grassroots um, effort was able to overturn really a politically charged, which shouldn't have been political, but it was, um, decision. And um, so in this case, there are thousands of kids in the Waukesha School District who are continuing to get free meals at school. And we think that's a very good thing. So there, there are a lot of things coming up. Like right now, some of the COVID um, funding streams related to particularly to, to students and children um, are up for renewal. Um, and again, those are the specifics that I want to get to people and um, why they, they want to uh, or why it would be a good idea to talk to your legislators about continuing those programs. Um, and I see there was a question about having to turn away um, people needing diapers and child necessities. 
we we have had to turn people away or to have, unfortunately give them less than we than they really need. So that is a thing. Um, although again, with the diaper bank, it's not happening nearly as often, or maybe not at all. I will have to check with the frontline staff to see, but that would be my, my response to that question. Chris or Tequila, anything to add to that about, have, have you had to turn away families um, who have needed diapers and had, or has there been a shift because of the diaper bank? Tequila, go ahead. Uh, no, we have not had to turn away any families. So that is, yeah not one family. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, definitely, uh, we would have to turn away families, but because we have a constant stream from United Way, we have not in the past year had to turn a family away who needed pampers. Thank you for that question, Kristen. That wasn't that wasn't even a plan. That was that was an authentic question. I'm I'm delighted um, to hear that. Uh, and and of course that's what the hope is, right? And I think I hope what you've also heard sort of threaded throughout today is this is really an issue of, of, of equity and dignity. And you heard it not only in the diapers, but in the school meals as well. So when United Way thinks about um, our policy and advocacy lift, we really think about this sort of concept of um, making sure that everybody has what they need um, without having to go through extraordinary efforts to get it so that we can provide, you know, one of the, one of the reasons um, yes, Karen, that is correct. Uh, we, sometimes we get newborn diapers and people are like, I, what am I going to do with this? Right. So, right. So yes, sizes two and three and four and five are, are deeply, um, deeply appreciated from donations. So, you know, already all of you on this call, uh, how to give to United Way, either through your workplace giving, or if you're particularly inspired by any of our initiatives, we've talked today about some really wonderful opportunities for advocacy that all of us should feel empowered to do. Uh, it doesn't take any special skill or talent to, to stand up and say, we think this is what's necessary to help the community and we can write a letter um, or, uh, and I, I say this to most of you, there's an election on April, on April 5th, local elections matter. And they matter particularly around these issues of, of uh, access to human resources and communities. Um, and then the third thing, uh, which I'm going to transition uh, to my to my friend and colleague Chris, is the volunteering aspect of that. So hopefully you lunched. We didn't get to provide it for you, but there's a lunching. We just did the learning. Now let's talk about the doing, Carissa, and I'm going to kick it back over to you. Let me first also, uh, I apologize, th thank you to our three panelists who um, did such a beautiful job, not only responding to the questions they knew about, but also then the ones I just surprised them with. So thank you for that, for being here today, for telling us more about your important work and for being such wonderful partners. Amazing, Nicole, and thank you so much. I wanna echo those same sentiments, the panelists. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing in our community and for taking some time to help us take a deeper dive and learn a little bit more um, so that we can be advocates and, and we can start doing and helping and, and doing our share. So thank you so much. We're gonna turn it back over. So now it is all about the do. Um, we've learned and we've asked some great questions and I'm sure there's more, but now what can you do to support this issue in partnership with United Way? So a few things. Um, we collect diapers, wipes, and sometimes a few extra baby items all year long that support our diaper bank and funnel directly to the three organizations that you heard about, as well as the rest of the hubs. And we are always looking to add more, but to add more hubs and distribute more product, we need more product. Um, so a way that we do that is certainly through collection drives. So if you would like to collect and donate diapers and wipes individually, we take collections at our Milwaukee and Waukesha office locations. You can drop them off anytime, Monday through Friday between nine and two. We just ask that they are sealed original packages. So nothing that's open or broken apart for hygienic purposes, we can't use it. Um, we take every size diaper, we take pull-ups, um, we take all sizes of wipes, you name it. So if you would like to give individually in that way, we would love to accept your donation. If you represent a workplace or a church community group, a professional organization, 
If your son or daughter's school is looking for some kind of way to give back, we have wonderful resources for you to be able to run a collection drive with those organizations. We have amazing receptacle barrels. We have posters, we have toolkits, we have great data and information that you can share. We have email templates. So we make it really, really easy for you to get the word out and to collect all those goodies. We happily make pickups with our volunteer van to come and pick up those supplies. Um, you can also host a learning session just like we did today. We do many of these customized for different groups so they can ask questions, learn more, the intricacies of this issue and why it really matters. So that is something we are happy to do on a more personalized level. Um, and soon when we are able to all gather together in person and begin to use United Way's Volunteer Center, we would love to invite you individually or with a group to come to our facility and actually pack some of our diaper kits where we're bundling certain sets that then are going out to these hubs. So there's lots of opportunities for you to collect. Beyond collection, of course, at any time we accept financial donations in this space, we have some great retailers and vendors, so we're able to stretch those dollars really far. So the $42.99 box of 136 diapers, we can actually purchase a lot more diapers for that same $136. So if you are interested, I encourage you to visit our Diaper Bank webpage. There's information in there on making a single time donation. $25 covers diapers and wipes for a child for an entire week. So such a simple gift and you're making it so that a family doesn't have to make that choice on if I'm going to be able to diaper my child this week, I know I'll be able to diaper them. So please consider that if that is an option for you. We'll go ahead and move to the next slide. A few other upcoming do opportunities. We are gonna be hosting a community baby shower. So we're gonna be collecting diapers, wipes, and so much more. Um, celebrating our diaper bank, celebrating local families, having what, what they need to thrive. So we're going to be hosting that at our volunteer center on September 27th. It's honor in, in honor of National Diaper Awareness Week, which is the last week in September. So stay tuned. We will definitely be communicating what that looks like and how you can join in on the fun. And then our last slide, please. Yes. So Lunch, Learn, and Do, this was our first of the series. We have three more that'll be coming up throughout the course of 2022, each focused on a different critical issue, inviting you to learn and take action. So our next one is gonna be May 18th. Again, over the lunch hour, we're gonna be talking all about our work in youth education, youth support and empowerment. So we're learning more about Mary Lou's Closet, we're learning about our backpack coalition efforts and our community schools. And there will be a kit packing component with that um, event for you to pack some much needed school supplies that we can then put into um, our backpacks as we're distributing later this summer. So stay tuned for more info about that. I believe that's live and ready um, on our webpage and you can sign up. And then lastly, I want to give a really nice shout out to our special partners and sponsors of this series, Landmark Credit Union. We wouldn't be able to gather you here today and certainly pack the resources and the kits that we funnel back to these great hubs and everyone within our diaper bank network without their financial support of this series. Um, many of you on this call are probably going to be packing new parent kits as part of this event. We had an opportunity. So this is like Beyond the diapers and wipes, what are some of those items, like we did with the Price is Right game, that families really, really want and really need, and how can we funnel those? So if you joined on um, to support that, you're going to pick up your kits Thursday or Friday at either of our offices, and you'll get a box of all kinds of goodies to pack 10 new parent kits, which then we will funnel out to these incredible partners. So with that, I want to thank you on behalf of United Way. Thank you again for sharing your lunch hour with us, for learning more and certainly doing more. We can't wait to see you at a future event. Thank you so much.